Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. And um, it's great to be here with our mayor. This is the second time in three, four days that I'm with the GSDM. Get stuff done, mayor. And we got stuff done on Friday with the taxi drivers, where he was very, very helpful and cooperative. And today, we're announcing we have gotten stuff done with the deliveristas, both important in terms of equality and worker justice, et cetera. So as many of you know, I took a bike ride with Los, Deliv Los Deliverista Unidos. Exact That's about it. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't get any better than that. Um, um, about a year ago, and um, they showed me how difficult and demanding their job was. It's awful. You're at everyone's whim. Sometimes these uh, companies, these uh, uh, deliver, um, apps, send them 40, you know, go downtown, then go all the way uptown, and be there in a half hour. Yeah. And nobody cares about them. Another big problem, nobody, the people they meet sometimes don't know that they're not getting any tips and getting very low wages, so they don't tip them at all like they would tip other people. And of course, very difficult riding in the city. People get injured, people, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but the Deliveristas Worker Justice Project has been fighting for justice for these people. There are lots of them. How many, 65,000? 65,000. I could say that in Spanish, but I don't know how. Um, um, uh, who are doing these, this low pay, long hour, tough working conditions on the streets of New York. So at the time after I did the bike ride with them and saw how difficult it was, um, I said I was going to meet their number one demand which was better infrastructure. My team and I got to work. We met with the delivery workers. We understood what the problems were, what they needed. Um, and then we worked to find solutions. And then we looked for a partner. And there was no better partner than Mayor Adams, who has been just great on this and done all the things that we have asked together to get it done. And he deserves kudos. Oh, here's what I learned from Senator Sheldon Whitehouse while we're doing language. It is not kudos. It's kudo. What do you think of that? Yeah, no, a kudo is more than one. He deserves kudo. There you go. Um, he went to St. Paul's. I went to Madison. They didn't teach us about kudos at Madison. Um, but in any case, um, uh, so he's been a great partner. We worked on this from the ground up with the delivery workers. We brainstormed every angle. We tried to problem solve. And that's why we're here today. And I also want to thank all the city agencies at the mayor's direction, the Transportation Administration, Idanis, um, the uh, uh, Parks Administration, Donahue, over there, my fellow Brooklynite, um, and so many others, so many other agencies, which the mayor will mention, have worked with us on this, and they did a great job. So the first part of this plan is street hubs for the Deliveristas. You know, you're riding on this bike long times. You need a break. Maybe you got to make a phone call. Maybe you have to take care of your personal needs. All of these things. I had another joke about that. Can I sell it? No. no, no. All right. They're right. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell it anyway. My staff is going to kill me. So in third grade, we had very, very strict teachers at PS 197, and we had to write a poem about a room in the house. And so one of my colleagues wrote about the bathroom and said, this is the room where we hang our towels, this is the room where we move our bowels, and the teacher made him change it to this is the, t this is the room where we hang our towels, this is the room where we take care of our personal needs. <laughs> we need to take care of our personal needs. Um, as well. All right, he's shutting me up. Um, so deliveristas have to do this job without this necessary and important infrastructure. They're constantly out on the street, no place to rest, no shelter to protect them from tough. Imagine it's pouring rain or even snow and you still got to do this. It's not an easy job. And during COVID, we learned these are the folks who brought everybody food when they couldn't get it anywhere else. Right. And they didn't quit 
They didn't complain. They didn't stop. It was just great. They're amazing. So many are immigrants, and we all know that immigrants work harder than anybody. They believe in this country. They believe in making a better life for themselves and eventually their families. And they were, it was incredible during COVID how great they were. And so um, it's also, as I said, a huge workforce. And so we're going to take underutilized public space on our streets, like this newsstand right behind us. It's very simple. In other words, mayor staff came up with a perfect implementation and used it um, for delivery workers, places to, uh, they have to charge their e-bikes too. And there's a place where they can charge their e-bikes, get rest, get shelter. It's a game changer. The hub, it's the first infrastructure of its kind for app-based delivery workers in the whole nation. And as you know, app-based food delivery is just booming. And you need people to deliver the food. So here's what the hubs will do. They'll address the desperate need for delivery workers to have a place to rest and shelter from the elements in winter, a place to meet and get services like a bike repair. What if your bike breaks down? Where are you going to stop? And, you know, the restaurants who the apps use, they're not, some of them are very nice, as I did my job with them, and some of them are not so nice. It's, that's who it is, so you need these hubs. It will keep the streets and sidewalks orderly by allowing the deliveristas a place to congregate. The hubs will be designed in concert with community input, deliverista input, to reflect the e-bike charging needs, the shelter and neighborhood input. So we're not just announcing the plan today, there's money behind it. And I am not asking the mayor who has so many other needs to pay for it. I, I am placing a million dollars, I've put it in the budget which will be passed in December, the omnibus budget. And when, as majority leader, when I put something like this in, the chances of it being approved is like 90, 95, 98%. So we're gonna pay a million dollars to help get these done. There's nothing more that I love than bringing dollars home to New York, but this one's particularly sweet because it's so needed. The funding is in addition to the money we secured in the bipartisan infrastructure and jobs law. 260 million is going to New York City for better bike lanes from the federal government, which is also, of course, going to help our deliveristas out, uh, obviously. And um, we're working closely with the mayor and DOT to make sure that this money is used well and implemented well. And uh, I have every faith that it will be. So, as I said, this is the first infrastructure in the nation for deliveristas, we're sure in many of our cities throughout the country. And we hope other cities will follow the mayor's lead and New York City's lead in doing this. One more word about worker justice in this city. You know, we have big income inequality in New York. And I think it's the goal of every New Yorker at all income levels to lessen that inequality. One of the ways to do it is to make sure that our taxi drivers have a decent life, that's what we did on Friday, that our deliveristas, very important job in the city, can have a, a good, good life. And that's what we're doing here um, in this. So I'm proud to stand with GSDM, Get Stuff Done Mayor, uh, to announce this great program. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Senator, and really want to thank uh, the deliveristas and their organizing, and really my team that's here, uh, Sue Donahue, Commissioner of Parks, uh, Idanis Rodriguez, uh, Commissioner of DOT, uh, Manuel Castro, Commissioner of Mayor Office of Immigrant Affairs, and Commissioner Meuga, Commissioner of DCWP. It was the combined effort of all of the agencies involved and uh, the workers uh, to actually materialize and make this happen. And we cannot say thank you enough to the senator. Uh, sometimes when you're dealing with these uh, large ticket items on the federal level, uh, you have to keep your eyes on what is happening right here in the city of New York. And having uh, the leader of the Senate uh, to number one, uh, look after uh, those yellow cab drivers who felt as though they hit a bend in the road that they thought was the end of the road, but we made the turn. And we were able to uh, really uh, reshape uh, those uh, medallion uh, costs, and it is saving jobs and saving lives. And just as 
Uh, we did it for those drivers. We're doing it for the everyday uh, workers who are here. And we just really want to take our hats off. Sometimes we take it for granted uh, when we get our Uber Eats, when we get our food delivered to us, uh, that the people who's delivering that food is also attempting to have food delivered to their homes as well as they provide for their families. I saw it firsthand during COVID. They did not shelter in place. Uh, they did not, uh, they could not do their jobs remotely. Uh, they were on the ground delivering food to you when you were calling so you could provide for your families. And so we owe them a debt of gratitude as being essential workers. Essential workers need the essential tools to do their jobs, and that's why we are here today. Uh, we talk about six, 65,000 workers who are on our streets every day making it happen using their equipment, their forms of transportation, uh, charging their batteries, uh, making sure you have the bike lanes, uh, all the things they need uh, to provide their jobs, just, just as you and I need to, to provide our job. And these are essential services. We saw that, and we're going to continue to make sure they have the infrastructure to carry out what they need to perform their duties. These vacant newsstands uh, were perfect examples of how to properly use the infrastructure so that they can charge their batteries, they can take a break, they can get out of the inclement um, weather, uh, they can connect to the resources of the city. We're not only going to use these infrastructures so that they can have a place to rest, but we're going to have resources there to let them know about some of the resources that are available to them as they continue to move up. Uh, in our economy and in our city. Uh, we're going to also have ways of protecting the use of, uh, of motivating and promoting the use of protected equipment uh, that they can use as they're moving around the city. And uh, Senator, you're right. Uh, the rise of delivery apps, who would have thought, go back five years, you did not see this level of delivery apps uh, that are taking place. The rise of the delivery apps is causing us to rise to the occasion and give them an opportunity to provide their job in, a, in, the, in the correct way. We're going to modernize these structures. I walked past here and told my team, um, this is a blight. How do we turn the blight into a tool that can be used to provide a job. The newsstand business has evolved and changed, and we knew this is the best way to do it. And the hubs will be designed with input from the deliver deliveristas and communities. So this is a real partnership where they will both come together and design the hubs on what they're going to look like so that everyone can feel like they are part of this. This is a great opportunity of utilizing uh, our dollars to address the problem firsthand. And so I want to thank you, Senator, and I want to also acknowledge that you are GSDS, Get Stuff Done Senator, you know. Glad it's, the S was Senator. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we want to bring on from the uh, Los Deliveritas Unidos, uh, Lihia, Lihia. To come and say a few words. Thank you for your partnership and your team. I see you, you ladies and gentlemen, out all the time doing the right thing for our city. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. She does a great job for the delivered East Coast. We work so close. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for your leadership, Senator Schumer and our Mayor Adams, uh, for leading the way for deliveristas not only in New York, but showing um, how we can build the right infrastructure and there's no better way to do it than, than in our city. So um, I'm proud to be here on behalf of Workers' Justice Project and Los Deliveristas Unidos. Um, and we're back in City Hall um, at actually exact this place um, since two years ago. Um, and I'm proud to do it now, not alone, but with two Deliverista champions who have showed commitment and leadership to build not only the right infrastructure, but also ensure that workers can have the right protections in our city. And, um, and I'm excited and we're proud to actually be partners and in, in making sure that we can work together so we can invest and build the first 
Nations Deliverista Hubs. A new infrastructure model, as it has been said, that will deliver worker-led training, essential services, workers' rights in, uh, information, micro-mobility charging stations, and a safe place for deliveristas to rest. Thank you, Senator Schumer. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for investing in the vision of building a street deliverista hubs that will transform the app delivery industry into a profession that deserves living wages, safe working conditions, and now a new worker-led deliverista infrastructure. And it was in this same place, right, in these parks, where deliveristas began organizing two years ago. Using public spaces like these, not only to rest, but also to share meals, play soccer in the parks, discuss workplace issues that they are experiencing in the app delivery industry, and even to demonstrate their collective power they have as an unrecognized union of app delivery workers. And two years ago, it was the first time when Deliveristas decided to march all the way from 76th Street, Upper West Side, all the way to City Hall. Dreaming that a better life is possible, that they can build a new future, reimagine a better infrastructure. And during this two-year journey, Deliveristas have gone from rewriting the rules of their own industry to now bringing two Deliverista champions to help them design New York City's infrastructure for 65 Deliveristas across the city. This is what Deliverista power looks like, not only in the app delivery industry, but in the streets and, the, and also in the best city of the world, which is New York City, our city. Deliveristas and Workers' Justice Project is proud to stand here with Senator Schumer and our New York City Mayor Adams, our allies, as partners, and as real champions of deliveristas, who are not just putting their words and their commitment, but are putting their money, putting their resources to reimagine a better future for 65,000 deliveristas that deliver our foods and many other primary resources across our city. Thank you. Um, Senator Schumer, um, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, for your commitment, for your leadership. And we're here to continue, as we say in Spanish, la lucha sigue. Ent <laughs> Until no deliverista have to risk their lives, earn poverty wages, because of the lack of infrastructure. And we're here because deliveristas unidos jamás serán vencidos. Deliveristas, unidos, jamás serán vencidos. Thank you. Estás unidos, jamás serán vencidos. I got to go, Mayor. Okay. Going after Freeport. Hold on, we got a shirt for you. We got a shirt for you. Oh, I have the black shirt, now I have the white shirt. Thank you. We love you, and we're going to stick by you and keep helping. Thank you. Thank you. We should have a contest as the best design bike. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> we'll do a few on question topics and then we're going to do a few off. Hi. Um, on topics. Hi. How are you? Good. Can you talk a little bit more about how many hubs you're hoping to create and? and how much you can really do with $1 million? It's a start. It's always a start. And then we will evolve to more. Uh, Sue, you have that correct? Absolutely, yes. Thank you for that question. We have a number of um, uh, vacant um, former newsstands like this across the city. Um, and we're going to be analyzing each of those and seeing how we can move forward. Um, it will go through our usual process, uh, which we do with concessions. We'll take it before the FCRC, go through a regular negotiation process. But we at Parks, along with City Hall, have always looked to see how we can revitalize spaces that are in our parks or adjacent to our parks. And we see this as a great use of these empty spaces. A 
again, uh, as we look at our street furniture, our street structures, uh, our street former newsstands, we want to look at all of these structures and how do we use them appropriately. And so this is a start. <laughs> this is the beginning of re-examining our street furniture and our street designs so that we can use it, uh, the infrastructure, in the right way. Have you, you know how long it's going to take, Sue? Um, we'll go through a process, the city process with the um, FCRC, our normal negotiation process. It will take at least a few months because um, we'll be seeking a sole source agreement to move these forward. So it'll take at least a few months. Yeah, um, Mr. Mayor, given that they're going to be charging their batteries, will the fire department be involved in any sort of regulation? Because there been issues with these batteries, you know, catching fire and exploding? Um, always with any structures we do, we're going to make sure parks, because parks is in charge of these structures, we're going to make sure DOB, do we meet the standards? We're going to make sure FDNY, we meet the standards. So we're going to make sure that this is going to be a safe place uh, for the, the deliveries as they do their job. Can you put this into context of it? What kind of charging stations are there now? What's availability? Great questions. Uh, you know, it was amazing the relationship between some of the restaurants that wanted the, the deliveries to deliver their food and allowing them access just some of the basic things they need, like delivering, I mean, like charging their batteries and other things. It just was not in place. They did the best they could. And now we want to formalize that they have a location where they can actually carry it, carry it out. This industry uh, just expanded beyond our imagination. As I stated five years ago, of uh, you know, did we know what a deliverista actually was? Did we know about these food apps? I think that COVID sort of expedited how much people were using uh, these apps. And so this is a new industry. We have to pivot, shift, and evolve based on the growth of the city. And that's what we're doing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, well, actually, first, a follow-up to the commissioner, kind of to piggyback off of Dana's question. Is there a ballpark estimate for roughly how many hubs are going to be created with that million dollars? And then secondly, during the pandemic, an issue that emerged was bathroom access for delivery workers. And I'm wondering, are any of these structures going to have bathrooms? Uh, first, let me the first part that you ask. Um, once we get the exact numbers, we'll let you know. Uh, we don't want we don't want to guess. We're gonna let you know. We know we have a million dollars. We will see how much that takes us based on the build out. And once we know the exact number that it would take, we'll let you know. And then, if this is something we want to include in the budget next year, the first million came from uh, the senator. If we want to include this in the budget to keep expanded. We're gonna do so. We're gonna see the usage, how popular it is, how much people enjoy it, and we will evolve as as uh, as as needed. January first, 2022. Restaurants were required to allow the deliveristas to utilize uh, their restrooms. And so they're not, there won't be restrooms inside these structures, but they now can u utilize the restaurants, the restrooms in restaurants. On topic, um, yep. Who is going to be staffing these centers? Is it going to be the CWP workers, parks department workers? You want to touch that? We don't envision that they'll be staffing, they'll be maintained, uh, it's going to be charging hubs, it's going to be locations for gathering. We don't envision that they'll be staffed, um, but it'll be gathering places for the, for the delivery stuff. Okay. Mr. Mayor, what's your takeout order? <laughs> <laughs> I have my favorite uh, slutty vegan um, food. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm normally like cooking myself, as you know, or... I'll go out to eat. So we're gonna do some, some off topics, you know. So we want to spare you the off topic, you know. That this is rougher than a pothole. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Let's come, come in and see me.
fighting. I didn't get that last part. We're trying to get worker permits faster for migrants. Okay, I'm not aware of the van conversation. Uh, the last I knew, uh, the Florida governor stated they, they didn't need anyone and they were sending people out of Florida or sending people out of other locales. And so uh, I'm not aware of that and we'll look into it. Of my understanding, I know we are not doing anything as a city uh, to um, send people uh, via uh, vans to Florida. So I'm not aware of it at all. Concerning to you that if they're working down there, there won't be any protections? I always want workers to have workers' protection. Uh, you know, we sent down a team to Florida to assist our fellow Americans, and uh, I'm hoping that whomever is there helping is doing it with the proper worker, workers' protection that's needed. Mayor, good morning. Um, What's up, Steve? Good to see you. Slow it down like your driving should be slowed down. You know, I spoke with the governor uh, and we had a brief conversation. I'm going to sit down and speak with him about it. I mean, why would you have a bill like that? You know, speed cameras save, save lives. Uh, you know, what we're trying to do around congestion pricing and other things. You know, sharing of information is important. You know, I don't know why would someone create a bill like that. It makes no sense to me. Follow up on a separate topic real quick. Yeah, yeah, but I like Steve. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. On 3K, I know there's been a bit of a back and forth with the Chancellor, some critics who believe that you may be moving away from a universal approach on 3K. Can you commit that the previous trajectory will be followed to get to this universal approach on 3K? No, no. We're not going to make uh, any commitments other than we are going to continue to move towards of having a universal um, pre-K. Here's the problem. What my analysis found in the first few months, we found that the number of seats that were allocated were not actually being filled. And so what I told the chancellor and his team, I need for us to really wrap our hands around to make sure we're actually placing children in seats, not just counting seats, we need to be counting are the seats being filled. Once we get that complete analysis, we're going to ensure that we get as many parents as possible in 3K and pre-K. It's a great concept. It is going to assist us in getting, out, getting, getting our children early to receive the education they need, but it has to be done right. We can't just do things just to do them. It must be done right. These are taxpayers' dollars, and I want to make sure that we're spending these dollars accordingly. After our analysis, I'll be able to answer that. Mr. Mayor, regarding the asylum seekers, uh, what is the status of emergency relief centers and what is the status of negotiation with non-relief centers? The emergency? Uh, we said the status of what do you mean? Have you identified any other locations? Uh, the team is constantly pivoting, shifting, finding the locations. Uh, to make sure that those who come in, we could do the proper analysis two to three days and then make the determination on what type of shelter or what type of assistance they need. Some people that are here actually want to go to other locations. And so by having as many relief centers as possible, based on our influx, we'll be able to make those, um, th those determinations. Uh, Deputy Mayor William Isom, and her team is doing a great job in analyzing. As they see the need to open new spaces, we'll do so. You know what we're doing over at Orchard Beach? Uh, we're going to uh, you know, do the right analysis and determine if we're going to need more because of that. Last week, I think uh, two days in a row, we had anywhere from six to eight buses. Those are large numbers. And so we're going to continue to expand as the expansion is needed. But, you know, but, but it's, this, is a, a, this is a perfect time to, to really state that I don't know if you have really picked up what's happening. The far right is doing the wrong thing. The far left is doing nothing. I mean, the silence, I don't believe the silence that I'm hearing. These are people in need of services. 
And I am not hearing from the two ends of the spectrum. Far right is doing what's wrong. Far left is doing nothing at all. It is time for us to address this in a unified um, way. And that's what we're doing, this administration is doing, and we should not be doing it alone. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, what's your reaction to the problem that we've been hearing from asylum seekers in several homeless hotels and also in several food pantries who say they don't have enough food in the system, especially for their babies and toddlers, children who are not old enough to eat, you know, sandwiches and the kind of food that they serve in these hotels? Um, some of them are telling us they feel very desperate. They have no means to support themselves because they are not getting any public assistance. We know it's important to you to run a humane city, but your administration's press statements in response to our reporting have not really reflected concern about this or acknowledged a problem. So I want to ask you personally, what what do you plan to do about this urgent problem? Well, of, of, of first, we have not heard those reports. Um, we are fulfilling every standard in the area of making sure that people are fed, they're making sure, particularly our children, are receiving uh, the nutrition that they uh, deserve. And so we have not heard those reports. And um, if there are specific areas that, that are not fulfilling their responsibilities, we need to know about it because we're going to get in there and make sure it's done. I, I am not aware of that. Let me just follow up. I mean, I, I sent some information to the Department of Social Services uh -huh. last week with specifics. So are you saying you're not aware of them now after we've sent the information and reported on it that they checked into it and it's still not the case? Or are you saying you haven't heard about it? Well, if you send specific information to, okay, and then I will speak with them and find out exactly what we are doing about it. Uh, I, I, I don't want us to underestimate the unprecedented influx, you know, to get 400 people come to our shelter system or come here from outside the city needing shelter back-to-back uh, -back days, that flow is beyond our imagination as a city. And what the agencies involved have been doing is actually while dealing with the crisis, managing the crisis, making sure that we are giving people the dignity they deserve. And if you gave the team some specific issues, I'm going to speak with them this afternoon and find out what is our response. Because we want you to point out if there are gaps or cracks in the system so we can correct them. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the role. Your role is to bring it to my attention. My role is to make sure that it's, that it's, that it's corrected. Good morning, Mayor. Bronx or place like that, the rest of the areas are concerned with their safety. What is the city doing about this? What was the first part? Your first question? Oh, yes. What is the city doing about the safety protocol and screening protocol for the, for the migrants? And also, what about the residents of the Bronx? What are you doing for safety and security for them? Uh, same, same safety. We don't do any uh, screening other than uh, finding out the needs of people and make sure that we properly give them the resources that they need. And we're going to provide the public safety. That's my responsibility. My responsibility through the police commission and the police department, all of our law enforcement entities, is to make sure that the communities where we have any shelter, uh, migrants or not, that is safe. And we're going to continue to do that. Uh, your office. Chef. How you doing? <laughs> your office uh, released the. Uh, salary of Tim Pearson this past week, and I know we've talked about this before the original story, but how does it not look like to uh, New Yorkers that you're using your official position to benefit a friend here by creating some loopholes and paying him handsomely? Well, I I'm not sure if you recall that the same position that Tim is doing is the position that Chief Monaghan is doing. Are you aware of that? Okay, look that up. Same thing, same thing. The skill set of a former uh, executive law enforcement officer during these unprecedented times of navigating all of these pieces uh, is, is important. I thought Bill de Blasio was smart for bringing in uh, 
uh, Monaghan during that time, and I believe I'm smart for bringing in Tim Pearson uh, to do the same thing. And so it's not using my, my uh, position as the mayor uh, to help anyone, uh, it's to help New Yorkers. Uh, putting to get together a team that's going to help New Yorkers during these multiple crises at one time. And so I am, uh, I know Tim's capabilities, Tim Pearson's capabilities, and just as the mayor, de Blasio, uh, understood the capabilities of Chief Monaghan, I understand the capabilities of Tim Pearson. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, what is the status of your negotiation with the cruise lines? And also, what are your concerns with Orchard Beach, given that there has been flooding up there? We, when we get in agreement with anyone on dealing with uh, all of these issues around the migrant issues, we're going to make it formal. Uh, we're in conversations. We, we're going to continue to look under uh, every, uh, look at every opportunity to resolve this humanitarian crisis that human beings have created. And we have, we're not at a place to make any announcements, but when we, when we are, we are going to, we're going to make sure that we give a formal announcement uh, before we do, before we do uh, anything. And that's what the negotiation is at this time. Orchard Beach with the, regarding the flooding. I like Julia, though. I'm sorry. Thank you. And I like you. <laughs> Um, regarding the flooding at Orchard Beach, there had been flooding up there given the recent rain. Yeah, the, the, the puddling that took place, um, the team went up there, uh, Commissioner Isco went up there, he did a real analysis of you know what to you know what we have to do because uh, we want to get it right and you know we are not going to be afraid to try different things to solve these unprecedented um, problems that we're facing in the city and he went up he did an analysis of the puddling and see uh, what needs to be done how we must adjust just one of the most important terms is pivot and shift and we're going to pivot and shift uh, to solve these problems there's not a one size fit all on problems that we've never faced before. You have to be bold enough to try. And I keep saying over and over again, I'm the man in the arena, you know, so I'm gonna keep trying. There's others I'm gonna give you a nod and tell them, make it hard. <laughs> So would you reduce the amount of people in that location necessarily if that's going to be a chronic issue? Uh, we, we made it clear that we will always um, ensure safety. Safety is paramount. Uh, that's, that's important. And um, we're going to continue to shift and pivot. We're not at the place of saying we're going to reduce or not reduce. Uh, we're, going, we're going to make sure people are safe. We're going to make sure we provide the services, and if need be, we're pivoting shift as needed. And we're not at that place right now. Two more, Dana and then Chris. Thank they got you. Okay, we'll give you that look now. Yeah. <laughs> how, how would you describe Tim's responsibilities, his, his brief, and, and why did it make sense to give him the second highest salary at EDC, even as he was working at Resorts World? Uh, uh, as I stated when, um, when Jeff asked, we did the same thing and followed the same model that the former mayor followed. Same thing, followed the same model. I thought uh, Bill de Blasio were brilliant for creating and having that position, and I think it was the right thing to do. Same thing, same model um, that Bill de Blasio did, former mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we reported today that Deputy Mayor Phil Banks has a NYPD security detail. This is rather unusual for someone in that municipal government position. Why does he have a security detail? Okay, he doesn't have a security detail. Uh, <laughs> um, Phil doesn't need security. And uh, I think that if you look at the uniqueness of a Deputy Mayor of Public Safety, and how we created that position. Phil is out late at night, uh, responding to scenes, subways, one, two, three a.m. in the morning, uh, doing something that other deputy mayors don't do. Uh, the role he's playing that I need him to play is extremely unique. It was never in government before. 
of combining all of my law enforcement efforts together across the city and how he's carrying that out. And when he sends a, his uh, driver to the scene to find out what's going on ahead of time, a civilian would not be able to carry out that same function, would not be able to get inside that crime scene, would not be able to get on the ground, would not be able to carry out the same function. There's this uniqueness to law enforcement that if you've never been in it, you won't really understand it. And if you send a civilian to a scene of an emergency, a major fire, a crime, a shooting, a possible bomb, I have to get that information right away, and a deputy mayor of public safety must get it right away, and a civilian is not going to be able to penetrate those things the way a law enforcement person could do so. So this is a unique role that he's doing, and it's a smart way that we sat down and stated how he's going to do it, and I'm very pleased on what he's doing. Did the Intelligence Bureau give the go-ahead on that? The NYPD's Intelligence Bureau? Appreciate it. I am the Intelligence Bureau. <laughs> I decide what I need in my agencies to get the job done. I sit down with all of my agencies and make a determination what tools we need. Everyone falls under the team concept. And if you would speak to Intel, Intel would tell you that we advise the mayor, but the mayor makes a determination on what we're going to do to properly keep this city safe. I'm obligated to do so. And I'm sure they will agree that having a well-trained police officer be on the front line of responding to these issues is a smart way to do it, and it's a unique way to do it. Thank you.